Many years ago, I was born in eastern Oklahoma. Now, for more than 30 years, I've been observing the wildlife where I live in the Arkansas River Valley near Spiro, Oklahoma. You'll see in this video the amazing creature power that allows wildlife in the woods to coexist. Bobcats are actually quite plentiful, but you rarely see them. I caught this one as it walked by my back door, then chasing it with my cell phone. These predators are high up on the food chain with very few natural enemies. Roughly twice the size of the average house cat, they can weigh up to 30 pounds and can easily jump 10 feet. Historically, bobcats were found all over the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Its range is now more limited due to loss of habitat. They're no longer found in the upper Midwest and the northeastern parts of the country. The woodchuck is also known as a groundhog. This one climbed a tree by my house trying to escape my dog. Woodchucks are vegetarians and like beavers, their teeth continually grow. As a result, they have to constantly chew or gnaw on leaves and grass or trees to keep their growth in check. They're one of the few species that enter a true hibernation. However, their ability to predict the weather each spring is somewhat unreliable. My experience came with my tomato garden. Each day, the ripest tomato on the vine would be found with only the bottom skin remaining. After several days of this, the game camera revealed the thief was a woodchuck. North American Beavers they don't just build their homes from trees, they also eat them. Unlike other mammals, beavers can digest cellulose, which is a major component of their diet. In our area, their favorite foods are cottonwoods, willows, and Johnson grass. When underwater, they can close their eyes, their nose, and their lips to keep water out. And their eyes are covered by a clear third eyelid, which allows the beaver to see underwater. They have a large, flat, paddle-shaped tail and large, webbed hind feet. They continue to grow throughout their lives. An older adult beaver can weigh up to 60 pounds, and they can live more than 20 years in the wild. They coexist with other wildlife, as seen here, with an owl, and then with a raccoon. A beaver coat can have up to 140,000 hairs per square inch. They have glands that produce oil that they spread on their coats to make them waterproof. This is especially important in winter. Here, two beavers are helping each other get to those hard to reach spots. This is called mutual grooming. A beaver's lips are behind the teeth. This allows them to swim with building material, food, and other items without drowning. Beavers were once hunted almost to extinction. Today, beavers are widespread and their populations are stable. The diversity of birds in the Arkansas River Valley in eastern Oklahoma is astounding. Migratory birds call this home a few months each year, while many call this their home year-round. 
after being extensively hunted to near extinction, the comeback of the Canada Goose is a wildlife management success story with more in North America today than at any time in history. This is a turkey vulture with its featherless red skin head. It's able to eat food that other scavengers can't because its stomach acid is so corrosive. This is a black vulture. Its head is black. It also has white wing tips as you can see when it's flying down here. Black vultures are usually monogamous and the pairs are believed to mate for life. And they remain together year round. I happened to notice this pair coming from a rock cave. So I thought perhaps there might be a nest inside. When I took a look, sure enough, there were two eggs. They usually do lay their eggs in caves or hollow trees or on the bare ground, and they generally raise two chicks a year, feeding them by regurgitation. I wanted to climb inside to take a closer look, but as I got closer, I realized that one of the black-headed black vultures was waiting inside. So I decided to come back later, and sure enough, they had hatched. They were very inconspicuous in the back of the cave, but since I knew where to look, there they were. Painted buntings are easy to locate due to their distinctive song. However, they're quite small. They like to perch at the top of the tallest tree. They arrive in the river valley the 1st of May and then migrate on by the end of June. While illegal to capture or hold painted buntings in the United States, there is a very active black market cage bird trade in Mexico, Central America, and Cuba. The birds typically sell for $50 to $100, but a nicely feathered male like this one can fetch more than $200. Killdeer lay their eggs on the ground. The gravel road in front of my house makes excellent camouflage for killdeer eggs. If you get close to the nest, the killdeer will start multiple gyrations, acting as if it is injured, but then when you get close to the seemingly injured bird, it runs away. The nest is hidden right in the open among gravel about the same size. Northern Bob White Quail, once a common sight, populations have now declined by 90% over the last 50 years. The Great Blue Heron this is the largest heron in North America. 
It has a very sharp bill that it uses to spear fish. This is the pond on my driveway. It used to have abundant small fish, but now they seem to have disappeared. Heron is a very patient hunter, walking very slowly, hardly disturbing the water at all. It is an opportunistic hunter and will eat a variety of different food besides fish, as you can see here. The most commonly employed, employed hunting technique is wading slowly with long legs through shallow water and quickly spearing the fish with its sharp bill. Watching that again, now in slow motion, you can see that its wingspan is impressive, up to six feet. Yes, snipes are real. This very unusual bird has developed some interesting survival techniques. The long flexible bill has special filaments on the sides allowing it to sense food in the mud without seeing it. The bill can open at the tip but stay closed at the base. This allows them to grab objects. Snipes are also able to slurp through their bills as if it were a straw. Its eyes are set so far back that they can see behind them while the bill is still buried in the mud. Running up to 20 miles an hour, the Greater Roadrunner is one of the fastest running birds in the world and will only fly as last resort. Roadrunners are famous for eating snakes, but they'll also eat lizards and rodents. They often control animals that are considered pests. Like the snipe and the killdeer, the Roadrunner will use the injured bird ruse to lure you away from the nest and then run away. Coyote or coyote. Either one is correct. Coyotes live in a variety of social arrangements. Some live alone. Others in mated pairs, and others in packs. Coyotes mate for life. They raise their young as a couple or within a larger pack. Coyotes are extremely adaptable and have been able to expand into environments created by humans, now living more in towns than in the past. Prior to European settlers in America, the coyote was confined to northwest sections of the country. However, as European settlers wiped out bears, wolves, and mountain lions, the coyote range has expanded. This expansion continues today as the coyote was sighted in Panama across the Panama Canal for the first time in 2013. Coyotes are fast and they can run up to 40 miles an hour. They can jump distances of 14 feet and over obstacles eight feet high. In Oklahoma, coyotes can be hunted year round with no bag limit. A recently mowed pasture is prime hunting ground for field mice.
This young coyote discovered a discarded chicken carcass, but was not sure of the game camera. He later came back to check it out further and decided to take the carcass elsewhere. After cleaning up small pieces left behind, marking the spot seemed like the thing to do. These three pups are lucky to live in this rich environment. Coyotes, with their rapidly expanding population, are the only major non-human predator of deer in the eastern United States. Beside their senses of smell and hearing, whitetail's natural defense is their breathtaking speed. Even in the dense forest, the deer can reach the speed of 40 miles an hour as they bound over obstacles. They are also good swimmers and can retreat to streams and lakes to avoid predators. The white-tailed deer is the most popular big game animal in Oklahoma, which is remarkable considering that by the early 1900s, they were hunted to near extinction. By 1980, populations were stable again and abundant statewide. Males and females form their own groups, each with their own hierarchy. Fawns stay with the mother for the first year, after which the male yearlings are kicked out to venture on their own. This female herd has at least 10 members. This young male was kicked out of the female herd, perhaps by his mother and or the alpha female in the group. While initially alone, he will join up with the other bucks soon. This herd just up the hill has at least seven members, all in the correct pecking order. Deer can only see two colors, blue, and yellow. Humans can see three primary colors. Thus, deer poorly distinguish the oranges and reds that stand out so well to humans. This makes it very convenient to use deer hunter orange as a safety color on caps and clothing to avoid accidental shootings during hunting season. The lead buck gets first pick as to which female will get to carry his fawn. The others are then available for breeding as well. Studies show that all age groups of males try to get in on the action, but the younger bucks tend to get run off. 80% of breeding is done by bucks three and a half years and older. The antlers begin to grow in late spring. They're covered with a highly vascularized tissue known as velvet. The external velvet falls off in winter. Sometimes they will rub their antlers against a small tree to speed the process. Although antler size typically increases with age, antler characteristics, for example, number of points, length, or thickness of antlers are not good indicators of the buck's age. Antler development is influenced by the deer's nutritional needs, particularly protein and calcium. Genetics plays a role as well. Bucks shed their antlers when all females have been bred from late December to February. Why tell deer are vegetarian? Their multi-chambered stomachs allow them to eat some foods that human cannot, such as mushrooms that are toxic to humans and even poison ivy. I caught up with these young bucks in April. Their antlers were shed in the winter. 
By fall, when breeding season occurs, they will have regrown full racks. One day, I put some leftover smoked sausages in a netted bag that small oranges came in and hung it from a small tree about three feet off the ground. The deer, with its keen sense of smell, checked it out first, but it was unappetizing to a vegetarian. Next to come along was a raccoon. The bag was just a little high to reach, but it sure did smell good. The prize was on a slope, but the uphill position still left the bag out of reach. Raccoons are excellent climbers, so climbing the small tree might do the trick. However, the tree could not support its weight. To the raccoon's delight, it did get the bag to swinging. Once swinging, the bag could easily be grabbed with its hand-like paws. Multiple independent studies have concluded that raccoons bested the abilities of cats and dogs, most closely approximating the mental attributes of monkeys. Raccoons are omnivorous, eating both plants and animals. They search for aquatic prey with their very sensitive paws This is much like I have seen my brother do when noodling for catfish. Underneath the tarp that covered an old church pew in my barn, I heard an unusual sound. Once the tarp was removed, I found the cushion of the pew had been repurposed. Females give birth to up to seven blind and nearly hairless cubs in April or May. Cubs open their eyes after two and a half weeks. North America's only marsupial is the Virginia possum. They have opposable thumbs and prehensile tails that can carry leaves and twigs. When the baby possums are about the size of a honeybee, they must find their way to the mother's pouch where there is not enough tits for all. Only about one half will survive. When threatened or harmed, they will play possum mimicking the appearance and smell of a sick or dead animal. The word armadillo means little armored one in Spanish. Arriving in Oklahoma during the 1920s and 1930s, armadillos can now be found in 15 states. Their range is limited by cold temperatures. Armadillos eat insects. While they may be digging up your landscaping, they're not eating the plants. Since they are nearly blind and deaf, armadillos rely on their keen sense of smell. When frightened, armadillos will jump straight up, about three or four feet in the air. Unfortunately, it's not a great idea to jump up in front of a passing car. I could hardly believe when these two seem to be enjoying an air bump, not unlike a human high five. The variety of snakes is surprising. Colors can be brilliant or complete camouflage. Seen here is a rarely observed power struggle between two male Eastern racers competing over the same female. The goal is to press the body of the opponent to the ground. The swaying wrestling match continues until one male concedes defeat and crawls away. If the contest continues too long, the female racer is likely to have departed, 
leaving no one as the victor. This classic vertical combat pose has been compared to a medical Cadusa staff or an arm wrestling contest. If beavers are present in an area, it's common that river otters are there as well. River otters are known to use beaver dens as their own for shelter and protection. While beavers are vegetarian, otters are meat eaters. River otters can dive to a depth of 60 feet and hold their breath for up to eight minutes. Fish is their favorite food, but they'll also consume various amphibians like salamanders, frogs, and turtles. River otters are an indicator species. They provide information about the health of their habitat. River otters are very susceptible to the effects of environmental pollution, which is likely a factor in the continued decline of their number in certain areas. Fast, agile swimmers with a mean bite River otters have few natural predators when they're in the water. On land, however, they must be wary of predators such as bobcats and coyotes. Chances are your backyard also contains a diversity of wildlife, each with its own creature power.